Yo, what's going on guys? My name is D-Free and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Review uh, in which today we're gonna be reviewing Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 7, okay? So uh, I actually have been slacking with these reviews lately for the Super Chapters. It's because they've been coming out later and you know, I, I didn't actually get the chance to review Chapter 6. I think I dropped a video around it, like talking about some of the stuff in it, but I didn't actually get a chance to review it, whereas I had reviewed the previous four chapters. So once again, today we're gonna be reviewing chapter seven. So the chapter pretty much takes place where the last one left off, of course. And uh, what we see is Bulma and uh, Jocko heading over to Zuno to figure out what's going on with the Super Dragon Balls. Uh, you know, this is kind of a little, a little weird to me. I guess they kind of want to know more about it, but the thing is like, they, oh no, that's right. They want to locate the rest of the balls for whatever reason. I, I'm still a little fuzzy on that. It's been a while since I've read those chapters. I need to go back and touch up on them. Somebody let me know down below why they want to locate them when they're going to get them anyway if they win the tournament <laughs> but no no so they're going ahead and they're just uh they're they're with zuno now and zuno just appears to be this really big i don't know Jabba the Hutt, no, I'm just playing. Um, you know, there's this really big humanoid type of uh, creature, um, you know, with a really long Buddha type of, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> he um, is apparently all seeing, all knowing. I believe they stated that back in chapter five. Um, there's nothing that Zuno doesn't know. So his fee though is wit, is, is, a, is a, a present or a gift, whatever, something of that nature. I'm fuzzy on the terminology, but pretty much, <laughs> His fee is a kiss, yeah, so you have to give him a kiss, and based on how he feels about you, he gets you a, a set number of wishes. So for starters, you know, Jocko gives him a kiss on the cheek. He's like, well, since you're a male, you're obviously not my type, because apparently he's male, um, I'm gonna give you one wish. And he gave him a wish, and Jocko's like, trust me, watch this. He asked, <laughs> he asked Zuna what size Bulma's are, Bulma's chits, uh, titties are, uh, her tits are, bro, like whatever word you wanna say. And he said like 83 centimeters, or it used to be like 88, something like that. And he was like you know they've been sagging in recent years that is so funny and he was like jock was like well was he right <laughs> just that fucking like just that dragon ball humor yeah that shit was so funny he was like of all things he could have asked he asked what sizes are, are, are her fucking tits like that's hilarious and then you know they talk about her tits being saggy that's just so priceless. But, you know, the next wishes we get are from Bulma. Bulma walks over and gives her a kiss. He's like, well, you know, you're a woman. You're you're, you're kind of, you're okay. You know, you're not really my type. You're also middle-aged. So I'll give you three wishes. He gives her three wishes, and Bulma wastes two of them on, you know, essentially nothing. She's asking him questions, and they count it as, you know, the question wishes. So it's kind of weird. I keep saying wishes, but he's giving you questions. Um, you know, he lets you ask him a set number of questions. I'm sorry I'm saying wishes. It's because I'm talking about them damn Dragon Balls. But the only question that she really gets to have answered was the one about the origin of the Super Dragon Balls. It turns out that there's seven between the two universes together. Um, and, you know, he goes into a little bit more detail about how they were created, the size of them, etc., etc. I'm not really going to talk about all that here, but it was interesting to note that there's not... Uh, individual set per universe they're kind of like together i believe that that kind of applies to the universes that are twin universes like we stated a couple chapters back um the ones that amount to 13 so that's pretty interesting as well because that means that champa can't get his own in his own universe he has to come to universe 7 um which is why earlier in the series like with the, the uh, manga chapter the first couple there was planets just disappearing and even in the dragon ball super anime they've been hinting at that a little bit um so he's been around for a while. He has been around in this universe looking for this Dragon Balls for a long time because over a year has passed. He's been over there on and off, I presume, for over a year. So then, um, you know, he explains that to them and, you know, they head back. Jocko makes another joke about Bulma. He was like, yo, you always, she said, take us back to the house. And he was like, well, yo, you always act like a stuck up rich bitch or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you have saggy tits. I started dying so hard. Jocko's a beast, yo. He's probably he's probably one of my favorite new characters in the series. I like Beerus a lot, though. Um, obviously, Gohan's my number one, but I think those two are number uh, sec two and three. But we cut then to Goku and Vegeta on Kami's lookout, or Dende's lookout. Well, Dende is Kami, technically, so he is a... Anyways, I'm not going to get into the fucking logistics of this shit, but, you know, they're in the hyperbolic time chamber somehow. Apparently, you know, the door was destroyed in Buu Saga, and, you know, obviously the, the whole entire fucking lookout was destroyed. That's a whole nother thing in and of itself. The whole fucking lookout was destroyed. Um, so maybe... I think I had a... I, I talked to Real to Real Mark about this, um... 
but maybe when they make these wishes on Dragon Balls, it's really vague, but maybe they restore property back because it just seems hard for me to, to fathom them rebuilding that fucking lookout. Like, if for example, when Super Buu shoots his human eradication beam or whatever the fuck it's called, you know, and it obviously destroyed every human except for uh, Mr. Satan, did it just like you know burst through windows did it burst through buildings like so when they came back to life after the planet was destroyed would did they just get restored back and you know have all these holes and destroyed shit or did it restore you know it's stuff that they don't really explain but i am going to in my own head canon my useless fucking head canon uh shout out to hell's i'm going to say that they pretty much do get <laughs> brought back because it doesn't make sense to me you know i guess it makes a little sense because how the fuck did the lookout get there in the first place somebody built it but it was just kind of weird because all those parts were up there and they were just in some sort of gravity and they're just staying up there it's just hella weird but apparently you know i argue with somebody well somebody was arguing with me on rhyme styles video about this like I was like, wow, they're in the chamber for three years. And someone was like, oh, no, they weren't in the chamber. They, that room is destroyed. And I was like, well, mother, read the goddamn chapter. It's, don't argue with me about what they say. Obviously, it doesn't make sense unless they rebuilt the door, which means they'd have to rebuild the room. See, this shit makes no sense. <laughs> but no. So they've been in there for three years. I'm getting back off topic. But they've been in there for three fucking years, uh, which is three days, of course, normal time. But what happens is they're in there just training and um they're talking about you know whether or not the fighters that champa is going to bring are going to be stronger and video's like well of course they're going to be strong why would they not be strong he saw us training and you know he felt confident enough to say hey let's have a tournament so obviously they're going to be strong now the, the the caveat is that i believe they weren't even in super saiyan they were in base i don't even know if champa knew how strong they really were because i believe he made a remark saying that they're not that impressive so we don't know how this is all really going to turn out um, so then they go back into their Super Saiyan forms and they pull out the old school fucking pose, you know, from the way back, the original fight between those two. And I was like, I was like, damn, yo, they're in Super Saiyan blue now. This is epic, yo. And then they, they cut back to, um, space with Whis teleporting or transporting the whole entire squad to this, uh, unnamed planet that they're going to be holding this tournament at. And, uh, from there, you know, it's kind of weird because you see everybody there. You see Pan, you see Videl, you see, uh, you even see Pilaf and his squad there. And then Goku walks over to Videl. He's like, yo, where's Gohan at? Cause he's the only one not there. Literally the only character that's featured in the series. That's not fucking there. Um, and he's like, she's like, well, he had a conference and Goku's like that little shit. And it, he, you know, he obviously he didn't fully cuss, but the thing is, was like, why is Gohan the only character not there? She, I, I have no problem. I've said this several times. I have no fucking problem with Gohan, you know, settling down, doing what he needs to do, being a family man, whatever. I don't care about any of that at all. But my only problem is when they purposely make Gohan, you know, somebody's ragdoll, like Frieza, getting obviously one shot. That was, that was like, why Gohan? Of all the characters that was there, why Gohan? But I understand the logistics of that too, but it's like, that's my only problem. And when they find ways to just exclude him from the story, that's like what they're doing, because it doesn't seem like there's anything more to this. It's just like, he's just not there. Everybody is there, but he's just not there. Now you can try to read into it a little more. I've had people say, well, maybe Boo's already absorbed him. That's a whole nother thing in and of itself. I just don't see a reason for Boo to absorb him. I'm sorry. I just don't. Listen, I have no reason to suspect that Boo will fail a written test and Goku will pass. Goku's fucking stupid. I'm sorry. He's dumb as hell. He, he is dumb as hell. Boo is not even that stupid. The problem is that the English dub of Dragon Ball Super makes Boo look hella dumb. Whereas in the manga and in the Japanese version, he speaks in full sentences. The guy learns anything instantly. Like seriously, he's really just not that dumb. I, ha I would expect Goku to fail before I expect Boo to fail. So I don't see him absorbing Gohan just in order to pass. I just don't see that being legitimate. There's no reason. He's just really not that stupid, and I'm gonna be in Boo's defense here because, you know, he was totally portrayed incorrectly in the English dub of the show, and that's just the reality. But the thing is, a lot of people are just kind of not even noticing this. Like, even if that does come to pass, like, him absorbing somebody is like, him not really taking the fucking test, that's, that's cheating. That is cheating. Like, seriously, think about it, that's cheating. They didn't establish rules, but that's not Boo taking the test. By that same vein, Gohan would have to fight because he's the one taking the fucking test. Well, granted, it's Boo taking the test with Gohan's smarts. So it's it's a loophole, but it's still technically cheating in and of itself. So like, it's just weird, I don't know. But 
<clears throat> you know, from there, they arrive on the planet, and Beerus is like, yo, you've been in my fucking universe this whole time, and Chompa's like, well, I didn't tell you because you didn't even know about the Dragon Ball, so that's interesting. Uh, how I don't know how Champa found out about them, or what the case is, or what his initial goal was for the Dragon Balls, because now he wants the planet, obviously, but what his initial fucking goal was, I really want to know that, because it's eating away at me, because they just left that aside. They left aside the fact that he's been in this universe for like a year prior to meeting with Beerus and having that whole food showdown and whatnot, so... I really want to know what what uh, sh was driving Shampa to be in this universe initially, and then from there, um, you know, they're starting the, the written test. Goku sees uh, Kabito and uh, the, what's it called the Supreme Kai separate, and he made a remark on it. They said, "Yeah, we had the Namek Dragon and Wisha separate. That's all fine and dandy." He sees other Kais from Universe Six, and then from there, we get introduced to the Universe Six squad. The Universe 6 Squad is, uh, it's, it's very interesting. There's a guy that looks like a fucking bear. There's a guy that looks like Ratchet and Clank. There's, uh, there's, um, it's the, f oh, fuck, I totally, I'm all the way here. I totally didn't make a remark on the fucking great Pona. Ponta. <laughs> the pointer. Yo, uh, they're, their final member of, of Goku's squad, pretty much. The dude, I call him Nipple Man, yo. He looks like fucking Tarbo's wife. I swear to God. I just call him Nipple Man, but apparently he's the strongest person Beerus has ever fought. Now, that's kind of subjective now because we don't know how much stronger Goku is now at this point. So, it's kind of subjective. He may still be stronger than Goku, but I really just don't know because that was stated back when Goku only had Super Saiyan God. Obviously, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan is stronger. It's always been stronger, but even with three years of training, it's definitely stronger. You can't, you can't, you can't even make an argument. Three years of training, like, come on now, shut up. But, <laughs> but like, come on now. Um, so, from there... Obviously, I'm, I'm just getting away from the, the nipple man, but we see their squad. There's there's a clank guy, a big ass robot guy. Um, there is a bear. There is um, a Frieza clan guy. Um, they make a remark on him and they call him Frieza. And I was like, whoa, that guy looks really familiar. Uh, there's also a guy that looks like he could be from uh, Mira's race. Well, Mira's not really a race, if I remember correctly. He was created by uh, Toa. Um, so that's interesting. But. There's also one more fucking guy I'm spacing on. Oh, the Saiyan guy. Um, so it's really weird. Like, you know, he, Champa did say he wanted Saiyan, so he did get a Saiyan. So we'll see how all this turns out. Let me know you guys' thoughts on the chapter. Honestly, I'm probably just reading a little too deep into it. I, I probably am. I do that sometimes. It's just my analytical mind. Sometimes I just can't turn it off. But let me know you guys' thoughts on the chapter as a whole. I know I've been going for a while now. Honestly, I had a lot of shit to say. But that is it for me, guys. Peace out.